from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. You know, when it comes to fishing opportunities around our state, it's our diversity that certainly sets us apart. Think about it, you've got everything from the Oklahoma River here in downtown Oklahoma City to the most remote parts of the state with our streams, our rivers, our lakes, and yes, even our farm ponds. It's our diversity that sets us apart. And today we're going to celebrate that diversity by heading down to one of my favorite parts of the state, Southeast Oklahoma. We're going to first catch up with biologists that have been doing a restoration effort to help bring back the red cockaded woodpecker. It's an endangered species that's found nowhere else in Oklahoma, but on the McCurtain County wilderness area. First, before we get to that though, we're, I'm sure that you've heard us talk about the restoration efforts of the Lower Mountain Fork River in the Beaver's Bend State Park area. And today we're proud to announce that that effort is complete. We're going to catch up with our biologists and, and recap what it took to get to this point. You know, actually from the time the first bulldozer entered the water to fishermen were catching trout was actually less than a year, but it actually took years before that in preparation to get to that point. Everything from sending biologists out of state for special training to developing computer models to helping to find partners to get the job done. We are proud to say that we have many good partners that help to make this a, a reality. Everything from the 89er chapter and the Oklahoma City chapter of Trout Unlimited to the Corps of Engineers to the Lower Mountain Fork River Foundation and yes, even Beaver's Bend State Park played a role as well. Let's help us celebrate the completion of the Lower Mountain Fork River Evening Hole Project today. Hi folks, I'm standing with you today on the banks of the Mountain Fork River in southeast Oklahoma in McCurtain County. This portion of the Mountain Fork River trout fishery is known as Evening Hole and it is going to be the site of the Oklahoma Wildlife Department's largest stream restoration project undertaken to date. What we have in this area is a wide shallow section of the stream that's not as good for trout fishing and trout habitat as what we'd like for it to be. So we've initiated the Evening Hole Restoration Project. Folks, I've taken a walk out here into the middle of the Evening Hole Restoration Project area on the Lower Mountain Fork River, and I want you to just have a look at this channel and see that it's not reminiscent of a really nice, dynamic trout stream that you'd associate with a good trout fishing area. What we'd like to see in here is a stream that's narrower, has a little bit more flow, and dynamic fish habitat. Now, that's not to say that there's not some pockets of decent fish habitat in this area, but what we'd like to see is a narrower channel that looks more riverine in nature, has riffles, pools, and runs, a little bit higher water velocity, and a stream that's moving quicker so the water in this area doesn't warm as much as it's doing now. Anytime you're managing for good trout streams, especially in Oklahoma, you need to save all of those precious cool water degrees as you can. And in this area, being wide and shallow and slow moving in the hot summers down here, this water heats up a lot. So when we narrow the channel, get some more velocity in here, it won't have as much time to warm up and also along the way we'll create better fishing habitat with ripples and pools and runs using a variety of native materials and it'll be a lot better place to go fishing. Okay, I'm coming up on the sill that creates the evening hole project area. This is the concrete sill that supports stop logs historically to back water up upstream for different recreational activities. What I want you to notice is the difference in elevation from where I was just standing right here on the ground to what the natural stream bed elevation should be. And what that shows you is all the sediment that's normally naturally transported in a stream environment is backing up and falling out and building up upstream of this concrete sill. So as part of this project, a very key element is to remove a couple of sections of this concrete sill to help us establish a more proper stream slope. And then when we constrict the channel, you'll have more velocity to transport the sediment That'll really help us attain the objectives of better trout fishing and trout habitat. This is a real important part of what we're doing. Once we do that, we're going to narrow this channel by putting an island in the middle of the stream channel that will allow us on one side of the stream to have a narrow, faster flowing stream with a higher slope and more dynamic trout fishing conditions. And on the other side of the island will be a backwater wetland 
This area will be very good for producing the different insects and things like that that trout like to eat. Another part of this project is going to be the creation of an additional 2,000 feet or so of trout stream that we've never had before. We're standing in an abandoned channel of the lower Mountain Fork River. Today, as you can see, it's dry, it's full of leaf litter and trees. Pretty soon, though, this is going to be an exciting trout fishery. You know, here at the Mountain Fork, uh, every foot of trout fishery that we can protect and increase is to our benefit and it's, it's very, very exciting. Um, our trout fishermen come from many states around to fish right here in southeast McCurtain County. Past me, you can see Chris and Mike laying out the new channel, which will be Lost Creek. It's a project that is unique uh, in the state of Oklahoma and even in, across the United States. We will be reconnecting this old relic channel to the Mountain Fork River trout fishery and in the end, adding about 2,000 um, fresh feet of trout fishery to the Mountain Fork. These are the type of structures that will be used in evening hole. Again, this is called a J-hook vein. We'll use J-hooks and cross veins, which is simply a J-hook that extends all the way across the channel to help regulate the energy inside of the channel. Now, why is that important? Energy regulation is important because if we have too much energy in the channel, then we're going to have erosion problems. And when we have erosion problems, then we degrade our habitat. The river becomes too wide, too shallow, and we really limit the quality of habitat for our trout. Now all in all, J-hook veins do three important things. They stabilize the bank that they're built into, which promotes healthy tree growth. They improve habitat for trout, and they serve as a natural looking stabilization feature. In other words, this may be a structure that you see in a bedrock outcropping in a natural system. These structures, along with cross veins, which simply go all the way across the channel, will be used extensively in the evening hole restoration project. This will benefit trout and anglers a lot as they congregate trout near these beautiful structures. This is the culmination of probably one of the neatest projects that we've ever tried to do in Oklahoma and maybe even in the nation. It's, it's, it's that spectacular. And if you could have seen this area uh, before what it is, looks like now, you would have seen uh, a slow-moving slow -moving stream that was very shallow, had very poor habitat. The, uh, the ground under the, the stream bed was uh, silt-laden. And there was very few fishermen even fishing this area because of the poor habitat that was here. Well, our guys got involved and put together this project. And after many years of planning, the construction started. And here we stand today at uh, what is truly an incredible culmination to a project that was needed very badly. Now that, that's really the goal of what we try to do as fisheries managers, is, is to try to make fishing better in the state of Oklahoma. So 
So this project is, has done that because when we come out here and, and, and look at the stream now compared to what it was, uh, we see a lot more people in the stream using it, a lot more people fishing and, and catching fish in an area because of the, the habitat work that was done and the enhancements. The, the, new, the new areas are, are more accessible. Uh, of course, there was uh, that quarter mile that didn't even exist before. So uh, we're just making more fishable water, trying to spread folks out a little more so they can still enjoy that, that remote feeling that they, they come down here seeking. Uh, we're happy with the visitation we see now. It, it has a lot of spin-off benefit to the local economy, businesses in this area, uh, the, the state park that's here. And something to look at in perspective is uh, the, the trout fishery in itself has been a, a great addition to this park. It's helped us in our shoulder season. Uh, a lot of time through November, December, January, and February, things would really slow down for us. Where now we're seeing a lot of the trout fishermen are coming that time of year. So it's helping our park out tremendously. To give you an, uh, an idea of that, last year we sold $88,000 worth of fishing licenses and trout stamps out of our office alone. So that's a tremendous amount of fishing license out of our little park office. This project just will continue to get better. Um, we designed this, this project with the, the intention of, of, of allowing it to mature um, from a vegetation standpoint and from a use standpoint. Uh, when you look behind me right now, you'll see a lot of short short green grass and that's keeping us that's keeping our erosion down it's uh it's providing a nice scenery for our, the folks visiting us down here but um within the next couple of months we'll be planting a, a lot of trees out here some uh, fairly mature trees and uh be making this look uh, even more more like it's been here for a lot longer than it really has it's been about 10 years since i've been here and i've seen some things on outdoor oklahoma about you guys redoing this and it's absolutely beautiful I think you guys did an awesome job, something to really be proud of. I think the whole state could be proud of this. It's really, really pretty down here. I've just been here for a few hours and I've really enjoyed it a lot so far. I plan on spending a few more days, see if I can't catch a fish or two. When pioneers arrived on the plains of southwest Oklahoma a century ago, they encountered clouds of waterfowl so thick that they reportedly darkened the skies over Frederick. And along with the abundant wildlife, they also found very fertile soils in an area that became known as Hackberry Flat. Struggling to farm the flood-prone landscape led landowners to construct a massive ditch some four miles long to drain the area. In 1993, the Wildlife Department, seeing the area's value in reclaiming much lost wetland habitat, began purchasing property and restoring Hackberry Flat into a state-of-the-art wetland management area. Today, with the restoration complete, waterfowl, shorebirds, and other wildlife abound at Hackberry Flat once again, proving a line borrowed from Hollywood, if you build it, they will come. The restoration of Hackberry Flat is yet another story of our state's rich history over the past century. Our biologists in southeast Oklahoma have been frustrated for many years watching the decline of the red cockaded woodpecker. It eventually was listed as an endangered species in our state, and it's only found in the McCurtain County Wilderness Area. Well, our biologists have been working extensively to try to restore the habitat to a more favorable condition for the red cockaded woodpeckers. Recently, one of our producers, Steve Weber, was on location and happened to get some quality video of the red cockaded woodpecker. And it's, it's actually very unique to be able to get a, an endangered species up that close. So we took that opportunity to get an update on the restoration efforts of the red cockaded woodpecker on the McCurtain County Wilderness Area. We're on the uh, McCurtain County Wilderness Area in Southeast Oklahoma. We're talking about the uh, red cockaded woodpecker. Uh, this is, uh, they're an endangered species, and this is the last place in Oklahoma where the red cockaded woodpecker is found. This is also the furthest uh, west of the species range, uh, north and west of their range. 
they're a special species in that they live in live pine trees. They're a social woodpecker, meaning they, uh, they, there's one breeding male, one breeding female. Once they have their babies, some of the babies will disperse, some stay, and they, help, they all help feed the, the, the clutch each year, which it helps ensure survival. The management we're doing here on the wilderness area uh, it basically consists of hardwood thinning and uh, uh, controlled burning, which both help keep the uh, hardwood suppressed. As the hardwood grows into the, uh, the canopy of the pine trees, it covers the ground to where we lose the growth of new pine trees. And also, as the hardwood spreads out into, into the canopy, um, it disrupts flight patterns. Uh, it allows uh, uh, predation. It's easier for uh, black rat snakes. They'll climb the hardwood trees and go into their uh, into their cavities and uh, take the eggs or the babies or sometimes the adults. These uh, management practices that I've mentioned, uh, the uh, forest thinning, the hardwood thinning, uh, the uh, control burning, and then uh, installing recruitment uh, stands in, in good habitats. Uh, these were our, uh, management practices that we started in about 92 and uh, up until that time uh, we were seeing a decline of one, sometimes two clusters a year. Finally, it seems that uh, with our management practices, at least here on the, Man on the McCurtain County Wilderness area, uh, we have arrested their decline. These birds don't just bounce back. It's difficult. It's a difficult process. It's a long process. And by providing habitat through these management practices and um, opening up the forest, uh, providing more of the habitat they're looking for, we're finally starting to uh, see some increase. We have 12 uh, active clusters, meaning that they actually have uh, breeding takes place. Uh, most of those, uh, mo uh, most of our clusters have between three and four birds, so that would put us between 35 and 40 birds total. And um, this year, uh, the nesting so far has gone well. Last year uh, was a little slow due to drought conditions, the insects. Uh, weren't as readily available. But this year, so far, we've had uh, pretty good uh, rearing of clutches. The, uh, a lot of them have had at least two chicks make it. We, we look to fledge right around 20 birds this year, so that, that'll, be pretty, that'll be a pretty successful year for us. I strongly feel like uh, our work is making a difference, and uh, it's, uh, it's encouraging to see the fact that with the thinning and the, the burning and uh, working with the birds uh, all the time, keeping up with their population, you know, um, looking at how many are born, just all the work that we do to manage for them is starting to, uh, to pay off, to make a difference. You know, the diversity of Southeast Oklahoma continues to amaze me, and hopefully someday soon we'll all have the opportunity to have a close-up encounter with an endangered species like the red cockaded woodpecker, like our own Steve Weber did. And the evening hole project, oh my. You know, I know that I vouch for everyone that was involved with that project when I say that all the effort that it took to get to this point was well worth it. And let me point out that our partnerships actually provided the donations as seed money to get that project off the ground. We were then able to use Sportfish Restoration money to match to the donations in a ratio of three to one to get that project completed. Sportfish Restoration funds are actually provided by you, the angler. Every time that you buy a fishing pole or a new lure, then an excise tax that's a, attached to the price tag of that product then eventually trickles its way down to the wildlife department to be used for projects like the Evening Hole. So we're proud to say that the Evening Hole project was funded by you, the sportsman. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you somewhere new next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.